assholes. And I asked the question, have you seen the, quote, cartoons in Charlie Hebdo? Have you seen them? No. I said, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you take that pencil and you sign this contract? Swear to me that you will put any cartoon that I pick from Charlie Hebdo in your school newspaper or your local newspaper, this thing. So it goes to show you that they had no idea. All they know is the meme started, the actual quanta of information, the data. Well, I mean, it does show Muhammad, give, uh, and I don't want to be vulgar with children listening, but it shows Muhammad performing oral sex on men right. and stuff like that. And we are the United States of politically correct. The people that I know who are the prototypical professional left, those individuals who will parse words about the way a particular ethnicity is depicted in a cartoon on TV would not post the same cartoon that they are protesting in support of. And they cannot also understand that you can support the military support the soldiers, but be against the war. You can support freedom of speech, but not like a particular expression of that. You can support a particular idea. Yeah, they say free speech is agreeing with whatever they say. When you counter it, they go, how dare you hate speech me? No, no, I don't have to agree with you. We've got to go to other callers, but thank you, okay. Riley. Great points. Uh, very smart audience out there. Really impressive. Uh, let's go to Larry in Tennessee. Listening on 94.3 FM WNFZ. Uh, go ahead, Larry. You're on the air. Hello, Alex. How you doing today? Good, brother. Go ahead. Hey, first of all, I just want to thank you. My family and I want to thank you for all the hard work that you do day in and day out. And we do support your radio show by uh, purchasing your products. Uh, but anyway, I have some pretty interesting information that, um, I, well, I was blown away last week. Uh, we just relocated from Florida after... Basically, listen to your radio show here a few years ago. At first, I thought you were absolutely nuts. Uh, now, I'm the one that's nuts, according to my in-laws, but who cares? I don't care. But well, that's what I found. Anyway, when people uh, listen for a few years and actually check into what I'm saying, they tend to get more radical than even I am, uh, generally, and then I get criticized for not being hardcore enough. Right on, though. <laughs> You're right on, brother. Well, thank you, my friend. But... but but, but anyway, uh, it's time for me to uh, switch my driver's license over from Florida to Tennessee. Uh, so I call up the uh, local license branch, and I ask them, you know, what information do I need to bring in to transfer my driver's license? Well, when they answered the phone, I looked the number up, and it said the local uh, DMV. Uh, well, when I called the phone, uh, the phone number, uh, they answered as Homeland Security. I thought I dialed the wrong number. No, that's right. The feds have taken everything over, basically. Uh, national ID card, everything. It, it's all centralized now. Yeah, you know, uh, you know. I just thought it was kind of, kind of weird. I mean, watch my film, America Destroyed by Design, 1997. We show all the executive orders, all of it. <coughs> Excuse me. It just took them ten years or so to get it in place, and then now it's all covertly being done. And illegals get to get driver's license in most states with no ID or a fake Mexican ID. But you've got to show a bunch of forms of identification. I'm going to skip this network break and keep Lionel with us when we get to all these calls and uh, get his analysis of this. But uh, finish up what happened when you called the local number for the DMV and got Homeland Security. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just very – and they went on and gave me a long list. Like you were saying, you know, we, we got to provide – all this documentation that we are actually American citizen. We Driver's license, social security Tennessee. number, bank yeah, statements. Uh, yeah. Marriage certificates, uh, all this stuff. And, <laughs> and, and you know. And, well, just and, tell and them you're an illegal them. alien. But then they'll arrest you well, saying you engaged in fraud. You know. So don't tell there them that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm waiting now to get pulled over by the local police because I have Infowars.com stickers all over my bumper. <laughs> well, you'll probably get pulled over, and they'll uh, tell you how wonderful you are. I mean, yeah, most yeah, police exactly. most police like the show. Yeah, but anyway, I won't keep you long, Alex. i got to go to work here pretty soon anyway. But there's there's another thing. Uh, a friend of mine came to work here a couple weeks ago, and I was explaining to him uh, actually about what my experience with the license branch. But he, he brought he, – he goes to a local Baptist church, small Baptist church here in Tennessee, small town. Uh, he brought picture. They took video of three SUVs with cameras on the dash across the parking lot of the church, and they were Homeland Security, videotaping the church. Yep. So he says he had pictures of it. No, that's what Homeland Security does is go spies on mainline churches, you name it. 
uh, and they're creating databases. This is the secret police. That's why the Homeland Security people are freaking out because they now understand they're becoming a totalitarian group. So just as Homeland Security is a big problem, it's also a big pool of people that are awake because they know what's going on. Oh, exactly. And like I mean, I can said, you imagine being yeah. Homeland Security and spying on Baptist churches because Holder is targeting thousands of Christian churches to create a chilling effect so they won't stand up for, for, for pro-life? Remember, but mosques are out of the question. And I'm not advocating that either. But understand the sensitivity that has been exhibited by this government to never, ever infiltrate a mosque. And I thought, okay, fine. But if it's a Baptist church, if it's another form of religion, well, that's okay. Is that consistent? I don't think so. There is an open homeland security through the IRS war on Christians, mainline Christians. I mean, two years ago when Army Intelligence sent me some intel that wasn't classified, they don't send me classified stuff, and it was Army PSYOPs at Fort Hood. They said, no, go ahead and tell people. We don't care. And I was, are, are you kidding? And they said, no, we're sick of it. And then I ran into a whole other group of PSYOPs. Of course, Fort Hood's so big, there's a lot of different PSYOP groups, where they were told, you are not allowed to be an evangelical or give money, and you're not allowed to be in the Tea Party, or you may be court-martialed. Fox News picked it up and said, is this okay? So that's the supposed conservative standing up. Well, is it good? They're saying Christians are terrorists? Mainline evangelicals. That is a test to see what the military would do. And, of course, the military freaked out. They have a First Amendment. But, but this is going on. I couldn't believe it when we first got the documents and we called the commanding general about it and they did not deny it. So imagine Homeland Security. Did, that wasn't even secret. Imagine you're at Fort Hood and you're told you will not go to evangelical church. What? I mean, this is beyond the Soviet Union. What do you say to that, Lionel? You know, Alex, I don't think there is anything that the American people could ever hear in terms of a new show that was validated on any program or any network that would so much as cause a flutter of concern or worry. I believe that through systematic habituation to one example of excess after another, that the American people have been basically numbed by this, have been habituated, have been conditioned, so that if you were to tell them anything, that's why the government says, go ahead, see what happens, nothing. But if you suggest that footballs were underinflated, that is going to cause a hashtag deflate gate. Alex, I'm not kidding. What this country is concerned about, what gets our attention, what becomes viral, what becomes faddish, what becomes part of our culture, and what is excluded. And by the way, let me just say one more thing. The word homeland was not picked out of the blue. That word homeland has a very serious historical currency. And I ask everybody to Google that. Well, there's Maybe multiple the ones, but give me the one you want to focus on. It's always an imperial term for the center of the authoritarian empire. Going back to Rome, the Nazis called it Reichland, uh, or the land of the people, uh, and the Soviets call it the motherland. You cannot get more totalitarian. Uh, they're just going with the open, uh, open totalitarian creeds because they've worked in taking over before. What's your angle on it? And well, uh, and, and let me just say one thing. What it, what America says today, whenever uh, and, and, uh, and not not all America, but but a significant portion of it, whenever it does not like what you're saying, you're crazy. That's that Alex Jones guy. He's crazy. In a similar notion, it was just revealed that there may be hundreds of thousands of documents that have been released regarding extraterrestrial contact. Now, that might very well be the Watergate of the millennium. Do you know what that would do to American and world interest in little national jurisdictional issues compared to the universe? And the first thing that is ever said in conjunction with any subject about extraterrestrials or interplanetary is crazy. As if you're not supposed to question that we're not alone in the universe. I mean, obviously, what? they've photographed hundreds of billions of galaxies. Every culture said stuff was going on. Call it demons, whatever you want. The point is, it's not crazy to question, are we alone? It's in a lot of government documents. I don't go there because there's... Look, I can't get people to admit FEMA camps <laughs> when they're declassified under the Emergency Center's Establishment Act. Oh. 
and, and under a civilian inmate labor camp program, Rex 84, garden plot, cable splicer. I just gave all the public names. You can go to army.mil and read it right now. People won't believe that, so they're not going to believe, you know, there's little no. guys coming from Mars. But, but you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And Alex, remember this. If you tomorrow said, ladies and gentlemen, I have something that you're not going to believe. I have an actual tape, a videotape or a film of the actual shooter of President Kennedy on November the 22nd. And let's assume everybody said, yes, it's Lucien Sarti or whoever it was. Nobody would care. Nobody. Because something has happened to our, what we accept and what we reject. There's a pocket of us, a group of us who loves to, they're called skeptics, by the way, and they love to just reject whole cloth. Let me tell you something. The other day, driving to Albany, New York, I looked up in the sky and Alex, it looked like, I don't know, what some people might call geoengineering or chemtrails or whatever. So I turned to my friend who was driving. I said, you see that? I said, what do you think that is? He says, that's jet exhaust. I said, maybe. I said, it might be something called a contrail or geoengineering. Let's see how long these last in the sky. If they're there for two, three, four hours, that's another story. As we were looking at this, and my friend who has never heard of it, never read anything about it, forget nanoparticulates and geo, nothing. He said, well, what are you getting at? I said, I'm not getting at anything. Look. And even that which he looked at and could see, Alex, there were jets, like hashtags, like tic-tac-toe, flying. Where are they going? What's going He was saying, oh, what are you getting at? And I said, like you're saying, look, I'm not, this isn't an article I'm giving you. Look. Meanwhile, it's declassified that it's compartmentalized and being added by three major companies to the jet fuel so the pilots and folks don't even know that it's aerosolized out of the engines. Bill Gates runs the program and they spend $5 billion a year at the Department of Energy alone. The Earth is 30% darker now, according to NASA. They say from contrails, persistent contrails. No, they're not persistent. And we know there's real contrails, ice crystals. My dad's a pilot. The right. point is, these programs are real, but they go, where's a document on chemtrails? Right. Well, it's right. like, where's a document on FEMA camps? They're not called chemtrails. They're not called FEMA camps. It's called geoengineering programs, right. and China and Dubai and Russia admit they do it. Okay? And, yeah. But understand, though, as we're looking at this, <laughs> this is other people. So if you we remember, the, the government can tell you, Jones, release whatever you want. Here, go take your cruise of FEMA, whatever it is. Nobody cares. But talk about underinflated footballs or talk about a hacked movie or talk about some duck playing the piano or a neck <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> that will get our attention. That'll be viral. Something has happened to the way we process things that matter. Something has happened to our alarm mechanism. A switch has been flipped, the people are lazy, and they've been subliminally triggered on record to not respond to real issues and to respond to, to, to phony ones, and, and they're not humans. They're not, but, they're not conscious anymore. They've given over their conscience. I gotta go to another call here. We had a caller holding for an hour from Illinois. He hung up, I apologize, but we've got unlimited calls, so that's what happens. Dan in Nebraska, thanks for holding. You're on the air with Lionel. Hi, thanks very much. I uh, really appreciate uh, Lionel's uh, assessment of the movie and uh, uh, making out these, uh, fic these, these heroes, these propaganda heroes as, as heroes that are fighting for our rights. I wanted to uh, bring your kind attention to Reverend Pinckney in uh, Michigan, who is fighting for our rights every day. Right now he's in prison, still fighting for our rights. He, he tried to uh, 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 fight the emergency managers in Michigan, and he was arrested on felony counts uh, for... Uh, uh, changing the dates on his petitions. And now this uh, man of the cloth, just like Reverend Martin Luther King, is in prison, uh, wasting away uh, because of his political actions. I'll look into that. Yeah, there's another reporter who's going to be sentenced today for retweeting a threat, just covering it. I mean, it's really scary how the, 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 they're persecuting people. Thank you, Dan. We're going to go to Josh, wants to talk about George Soros and weaponized marijuana. And we got Nelson, wants to talk about waking people up. Robert's a vet, wants to talk about militarizing police. We'll go to him first. After we talked to Moreno, Mark Moreno, for about 10 minutes about this debacle in the Senate, 
voting uh, on climate change. Stay with us. Thank you, Lionel. We're on the march.